The Shalom Center for Conflict Resolution and Reconciliation is an interreligious organization pioneering peace building and development interventions in strife torn regions of Eastern Africa. Its mission is to work toward a society free of unjust social structures and to end the cycle of violence in the tribal lands of Eastern Africa. Well, joining us today is Father Patrick Devine, founder and international chairman of the Shalom Center for Conflict Resolution and Reconciliation. Glad you could be with us. Delighted to be here, Monsignor, and with your viewers. I was ex expecting a Skype, so to see you in person is great. I'm glad you could be here. That's oh, wonderful. Great Can you tell here. us a little bit about this, and, and what is the kind of conflict that's going on that, that you're addressing? Well, we are addressing um, a large number of inter-ethnic conflicts up along the borders with Somalia, Ethiopia, South Sudan, Uganda, northern Kenya, and the straggle the borders. And then we're also addressing issues of religious ideological extremism, particularly in the slums and down at the coast of East Africa, which is suffering a lot at the moment from the effects of uh, religious ideological extremism. And we're reading about this in the paper, but unfortunately, a lot of people don't hear about it a lot, right? Just when something terrible happens, we hear about this, but there, it's an everyday strife for these folks, right? Sure. Um, we're working in 28 conflict zones, wow. and these are in uh, zones where people are killed and maimed and displaced persistently. And as you can imagine, in terms of the Shalom rationale, in those environments, it's extremely difficult yeah. for gospel values like peace, truth, justice and mercy to take deep root and for people to live normal lives or experience through peace. And secondly, it's extremely difficult to have any sustainable development in those conflict environments because periodically schools, churches, hospitals either become inoperable or are destroyed. So do we forever want to keep pouring our money through a sieve dealing with the symptoms or do we tackle the underlying causes? So Shalom was founded to address those type of conflicts from the ground up, from the grassroots. Now, how did, how did you get involved? I mean, this it almost sounds a little like the Holy Spirit got involved here. Well, uh, I went to Africa first in, uh, as a priest in 1988, so I've been 35 years in Eastern Africa. I engaged with the refugees coming out of Rwanda in 94 up until 1998. A lot of uh, administration, 19 years as the regional superior and chairman of the Religious Superiors Conference of um, Kenya, as well as teaching at the Catholic University. And it was on the background of... Um, how do we help the gospel take deep root, those mm. values? Those, you call the gospel values, social, religious values. Um, how do you get them to take deep root, to transform the society so that people can live normal lives, of course, and experience the divine? Because it's very difficult to experience the divine if you're in places where you're killed and maimed and displaced persistently. Sure. The other thing I like about uh, things I've been reading about what you do is that you also set up like these, these groups with younger people so that they can kind of get involved in this kind of effort of conflict resolution in their own lives and in their own towns and in their own neighborhoods. So there's a number of these like clubs almost that you set up, right? Sure. Well, they're, they emerge out of the process. In so you way. can imagine how we, um, Monsignor, in, the, in these conflict environments of tribes against tribes, ethnic groups against ethnic groups. So what we have done is gone in among the ethnic groups, spent a lot of time identifying the key influential opinion shapers, chiefs, elders, religious leaders, women's leaders, youth, and training them, the local people, with analytics political skills and peace building techniques for them to be the architects of their future. And out of that process, and we have engaged in over 750 conflict interventions, wow. and out of that has emerged, and, and when I say conflict interventions, they go on for two years in each group. Out of that has emerged um, 529 inter-ethnic, inter-religious schools, wow. agreed on by all sides. Wow. And of course, then we develop peace clubs and shalom clubs because, of course, if you work with the children, and I want to say also that in my years in Africa, I have never met a parent yet who doesn't want a better future for their children. Absolutely, right? I mean, we can use a little of this right here in the United States too, I think. I mean, the whole world can benefit from this kind of approach to humanity. I mean, it's a beautiful thing. Tell us about your website. So you have a, you have a pretty vibrant website. We have because we, we, we explain the work we're doing. We're out in Africa and we don't have an alumni around the world. Right. So we depend on help coming from various parts of the world and uh, it explains our work. And as we're speaking, just to say, we have groups down at the coast dealing with the issue of extremism, religious extremism. I come over here to America to do fundraising. The website shows all of that. Um, I've been invited to many universities now, including the University of Texas, Harvard, DePaul, San Diego, and it's just wonderful to go in to explain the methodology. And that's what our website is about because we need help. And listening to earlier speakers, it's amazing how Africa can go off the map so easily right. as well. Yes. And 
there are 20 major conflicts still going on in Africa. You pick up on some of them all, you know, from time to time in Ethiopia at the moment. You look at the extremism that's across the Sahel, down the east coast of Africa, and in many internal civil conflicts. It's, and it's hard to keep all the balls in the air, I mean, with all of the things that are happening, you know, keeping, um, you know, Ukraine on the map and keep sure. so many different areas. But again, it's good now and then to, to think about these other areas because we don't hear much anymore because of the news cycle. Of course. But it's still happening. As and, and I think also one thing that we had to bring it to the church as well. Yeah. Um, and so we wrote to the Vatican. There was a Synod of Bishops for Africa in 2009 addressing the rationale I just explained and that there was need for even the, the priests and the nuns and catechists, everyone in the church, to develop the analytical skills. So now we have brought it into the universities and uh, it's, it's crucial going forward that we're all trained because we all know Jesus wants peace and he's reaching out and peace yeah. be with you. But it's, an, it's another thing to transform. And I think something that's very relevant is that along the continuum from tolerance to terrorism, what happens there? And you have the, first of all, I think, just to explain it briefly, the radicalizations that happens towards fundamentalism. And the next thing that gets radicalized much further towards nonviolent extremism. Right. And of course, in nonviolent extremism, and you could say we have an element of that in the West as well, where you have the polarization of the media and politics. And um, what happens there is, well, first of all, people don't want to listen to each other. They don't want the other side to be heard. And often they want the other side wiped off the social political narrative. Right. So that has to be addressed. And so I always, when I come over here on, on fundraising and uh, giving lectures, link it up with what we're experiencing in the West as well. Oh, yeah, and it's very real. So the website, everybody, is shalomconflictcenter.org. And it's uh, worth a visit and worth helping if you can. It's a really great, great, great way to change this world. Thanks for being with us. Glad you could come. I'm delighted, and I want to say Stay thanks to everybody who has been helping us, and thank you for being here. And we need your help if we're going to really get the gospel values to take deep root in Africa. Thanks so much. God bless.